Sasha and Basha have been friends since school. They got their diplomas together and became students of the same university. The friendship between the boys was very strong. After graduation, they did not look for a job, but decided to set up a business together, an auto repair business. Gradually, they expanded the business, opening several car service stations. But there were no secrets between friends, only strong trust and mutual understanding. But life always surprises at the most unexpected moment. Alexander married a beautiful girl, Irina, and Pavel still couldn't create a family. Irina was Alexander's first love. She was in the same year at the university. Sasha fell in love with her at first sight, but the girl was in no hurry to respond with mutual love. They were friends with the three of them. They often went out together, but the persistent boyfriend's courtship melted the beauty's heart. Soon, Irina and Alexander decided to start dating, and later, Ira became Sasha's wife. The couple has not yet succeeded in having a baby, although they really wanted one. Pavel never really liked Irina, but he respected his friend's choice. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. Alexander often joked about his friend and his single life, but Pavel only joked that the one who would become his soulmate had not yet been born. He did not trust girls. Once in his youth, he had been betrayed, and now he was afraid to have a close relationship with girls. Although he was good-looking and always had the attention of girls, Irina was also directly involved in the business of the friends. She handled the accounting matters. They worked this way, completely trusting each other. But at one point, their happy life was left behind. A misfortune happened. One night, Sasha was attacked and badly beaten by hooligans. A little later, the man was found bleeding and sent to the intensive care unit. The perpetrators were not identified and punished. The strange thing was that nothing had been stolen from him although the man had an expensive phone, watch, and money in his wallet. For some reason, only Pasha had such suspicions. He shared his thoughts with Irina, but she just brushed him off. She had no time to listen to nonsense. So Pavel decided to find everything out on his own. Sasha was tall and stocky, actively engaged in sports and went to the gym. It was not so easy to beat him up. The guy did not wake up. His condition was steadily serious. Pasha persuaded the doctor to let him see his friend. He visited Alexander every day. Ira came too, but she stayed with her husband only for a short time. Basha begged his friend not to leave, asked him to wake up. For him, his friend was the dearest person in the world. He was very afraid of losing him. One day when Pavel was leaving the hospital, he noticed a familiar car, Irina and her driver, at the front entrance. Basha looked suspiciously at his friend's wife. He had been noticing something strange for some time now. Ira often shared glances with her driver, even flirted a little. Basha had hinted at this before, but he had only laughed at his incredulity because he completely trusted his wife. This time, Ira got out of the car holding the driver's hand who opened the door for her. When they saw Pavel, the couple separated their hands. The girl approached him and coldly asked him if there was any news. Basha felt alarmed with all his gut. He replied that there had been no change so far and hurried away. He had no willingness to communicate with the hypocritical Irina, especially now that she was beginning to behave too suspiciously. His friend had been lying in a coma for almost three weeks. Things had started to get worse in their firm. After all, Alexander had always been in charge of their business, solving the most important issues. In addition, some strange things were happening around them. Irina began to intensively get involved in all matters, trying to replace her husband. The driver, Dennis, who had nothing to do with the business, was helping her. Pavel expressed his dissatisfaction to Irina, but she rudely silenced him, saying that it was none of his business. She added that Pavel himself was in no hurry to help, but Dennis was helping and he was succeeding. Pavel was simply shocked by such insolence and the behavior of his friend's wife. His suspicions grew with each passing day. He had no longer had any doubts that they were lovers. A few days later, he decided to check where Irina was always going with her driver. He got into a taxi and followed her car. Ira and her driver stopped outside Sasha's country house. All Pavel's doubts went away when the couple got out of the car and began passionately kissing. Basha had seen enough. He drove back to the city. On the way, he had an interesting thought. He called Irina and told her that she needed to be at the office urgently, but she replied that she was busy and would not be back until two hours later. That was exactly what Basha needed. He needed to win some time. He decided to search Sasha's office. Locking him inside, he looked for something that might give him a clue. 
but he found nothing. Only in the last drawer did he find his friend's old phone. A long time ago, they had bought two identical phones and they kept them for communication to deal with particularly important matters. Irina also knew that there was another phone of her husband and she had the number. Basha took the device with him and left the office. In the evening, Pavel received a phone call from Irina telling him that Alexander had died in the intensive care. Basha drank all night with grief, unable to cope with his feelings. In the morning, he went to Irina to discuss all the details of the funeral, but she had already decided everything herself with the help of her driver. Basha was simply shocked by her indifference. When all the preparations were completed, the farewell ceremony took place. Ira walked, leaning on her lover's arm, occasionally glancing at Basha. The man inside was just raging with anger. He was almost certain that the couple was involved in his friend's death. Everything went exactly the way they had benefited. Now Sasha wasn't standing in their way. Basha swore that he would avenge his friend. He had something in mind and was about to put his cunning plan into action. And so at the funeral, before they closed the coffin lid, the guy demonstratively put his phone there. Then he called from his mobile phone to a friend's number. Basha told everyone that let this thing stay with Sasha forever. Let all the contacts go with him. As Pavel said goodbye to his friend, he whispered softly that he would avenge him. He apologized for not keeping him safe, but in fact, he put the phone with a completely different SIM card in the coffin. He kept Alexander's SIM card. The next day, he called Irina from this number, who was with her lover. When she picked up the phone, she heard a greeting in the manner of her late husband. The voice on the receiver reproached her that she rarely came to see him at the hospital and told Irina to tell the truth about she and her lover had brought him to his grave. He threatened that if she would not tell, he would call her every day and remind her of the crime. Irina instantly went pale and looked at the phone screen. It displayed the word, Sasha. The girl screamed loudly and fainted. Dennis revived her, but she became really hysterical. Of course, Pasha took a risk because he had no direct evidence, but he didn't fail. Irina believed in otherworldly forces and she started to panic. Because her husband's friend was absolutely right, she and her lover had carefully planned everything, or rather Dennis had planned and persuaded the woman to commit the crime. The next day, Irina received another call from the other side. This time, Sasha's voice in the receiver said that he would get the negligent wife out of the ground if she did not go to the police and tell everyone the truth. He promised that he would do anything to drive her crazy. The voice was very similar because the caller used a special program on the phone that copies voices. Irina fainted again. When she regained consciousness, she called Pavel and asked him to come over. When Pasha entered Ira's house, he did not recognize her. Just in two days, she had sharply aged and was on the verge of madness. The woman was screaming and hysterical. Through her tears, she told Pavel that she was really guilty of everything and that she was now ready to confess and go to the police. A week later, Pavel came to visit his friend at the cemetery. He brought him two shot glasses and a bottle of vodka. He put one shot glass on the grave and held the other for a long time. Then he told his friend that he had his revenge. He kept his word. Then he drank the liquor in a gulp and left. He had accomplished his mission and punished all those who deserved it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.